Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, or as we like to say here at Shady Acres Woodshop, howdy. Today we have Cherry Plum. This comes from longtime viewer and good friend Tuffy Marginas. I've had this in the, in the shop here for, I think, three years at least. It's one of the most beautiful woods on the planet. It's a lot of work to turn because it's very hard, but the end result is always quite beautiful. And I think that'll be the case with this one. Uh, I, I might have something personal to say at the end of this video, if I can get up the gumption to say it. If I don't, I guess I'll edit this part out and you won't know that I ever said this. And you won't know that I have anything personal to tell you. So you can forget that part. But anyway, if, if I can get up the gumption to say it, I'll say it. But don't worry about that now. Let's watch this video and see what this beautiful piece of cherry plum becomes. The piece is about 11 and a half inches long, about 8 inches wide, about 6 inches tall on the ends, both ends, about 5 inches tall in the middle there. What I'm going to do is find the middle and the top. This will be the top. It will be a live edge turning. This bark hangs on really well. That's one of the things I like about it. I'm going to measure and find the center of this piece. I'm going to take it over to the drill press and with a large Forstner bit, I'm going to drill a flat bottom hole. That'll be for my chuck jaws to set against. In the middle of that, I'm going to drill a hole for my woodworm screw. We'll get this mounted up on the lathe and get to turning. Well, I found this piece yesterday and I was really elated that I found it. I didn't think I had any more of this left. And I looked it over, I thought pretty well, but now I see this rather huge crack here. And it comes up here about an inch and a quarter. And it's a pretty good sized crack. And then there's a couple over this way as well. So I think what I'm going to do is turn that away. I want to bring up my tailstock for support here. I hope that doesn't go right into that crack. No, we're good. What kind of speed we're going to get here? Oh, I don't know. Let's find out. I'm sure it's out of balance. Okay, we'll go with 450 RPM. I'm going to be using a 5 8 inch bowl gouge, mask, and face shield on. I want to say hi to a new friend of mine. A up, Olivia. Well, I guess I forgot just how hard this wood is. I'm going to have to go sharpen up, but our crack is just about gone. So that's a good thing. I'll be right back. Well, you know, I'm, I'm going to move over here to this corner because I'm getting sick of getting beaten to death here. And I'll still get beaten to death, but it'll be quicker. <laughs> quicker is better, probably. See how close we are to getting rid of these flat ends. Pretty close, pretty close. Starting to come up the side over here. Not quite over here yet, but we'll get there. Everything good with you? You see okay? Huh? All right. I hear you. Thank you. 
gun. A little tiny bit on this end. Just starting to creep up the side here. Looking pretty good. Love, love these kind of projections like that. Bar conclusion down this way. It's going to be a beautiful piece. I can see that. I really should go sharpen up one more time. Okay, that's what I'll do. I'll be right back. That crack that was down here, it's just about gone, but I, I want to try and keep it from getting any worse. I'm probably going to cut the rest of it away, but I don't want it going that way, so I put some CA on that. I'm going to switch to my negative rake scraper and just see if I can't smooth out this side here a little bit. The wood on this side is a lot softer than the wood over here is. So maybe it laid in moisture somewhere or something, I don't know. So that's about the best I can do for now. I'm probably going to end up doing that over again after I finish up the bottom so that I know where I can come in here with my side. So let's do that. Let's uh, work on the bottom. And we'll lay out for the tenon. And we'll make the tenon and we'll put some sort of a little base on here for it to set on. So now we know we don't need a base anywhere near this wide, probably half of that, so I can narrow down the side here. But before I do, I need to square up the sides of this tenon. And for that, I'm going to use this diamond point tool. And that looks mighty fine. So now we can go back over here and do our thing. Whatever that amounts to, I'm not sure. But I bet we figure it out. That looks a lot better, huh? And that brought this side up here. That's the lower side. And look at those beautiful colors in there. Looking good. You know, somehow I get a better finish with a, a sheer scrape rather than using my scraper. So I'm gonna go sharpen up again. Yeah, that's, that's pretty nice. Time for sanding. I'm going to start sanding with my Sandoflex. I'm going to sand probably about an inch of this bark up this way. 
mostly I need to get this edge done because it's quite rough and sharp in places. And then I'll take care of the rest of it once I get on the top side, but we'll take care of that for now. And I'll show you how that works. Oh, and, oh, by the way, I'm a little remiss. This is not a commercial. I'm not sponsored by anybody. My favorite place to get a Sandoflex, which now looks like this, not like that. They're plastic now, but that's way better because they're a lot lighter. Anyway, supergrit.com. For a while there, everybody was out of Sandoflexes. Couldn't get them anywhere except eBay at inflated prices. Well... Uh, supergrit.com has the best prices and the best selection of these refills that I've ever seen by far and anyway they finally have them in stock yay they were out for like I don't know four months maybe five months maybe but they are in stock now so if you're looking to get one that's the place to go super supergrit.com and then once you get there just do a search for sandoflex s-a-n-d space o space flex supergrit.com that's where you'll get your best prices and best selection. Okay, so I'm going to I'm going to start at 120 grit on this bark and then I'll do 180 grit and then that's as fine as I go on the bark. When I'm done with that, I'll switch to my 2-inch disc starting at 80 grit and working up through 400 and I'll sand all of the the turned parts of the ball. And I'll show you what both of those look like as soon as I get my mask on. And I'll do that from every direction, this way, this way, this way, and smooth that bark out and clean it up, and when it's done, you just won't believe how nice it feels around that edge and on the bark itself. Then with the lathe spinning in reverse at about 350. And that looks like that's going to be pretty easy peasy. I'll bring you back here in a bit and I'm pretty sure we're going to go with sanding sealer and shellac on this one. See you in a bit. Well it's sanded up really nicely and look at that color. I just I just love this wood. I'd never heard of it before until Tuffy sent me that first piece about three four years ago. Cherry plum. Oh this is sanding sealer that I'm applying shellac based sanding sealer it's called zinzer seal coat it comes ready to use out of the can i don't do anything to it at all and then i will apply zinzer shellac uh, for the final finishes and that also comes ready to use out of the can and i don't i don't do anything to that either like i said this part here this, this side is you, maybe you can kind of see it looks like torn grain but it's not it, it's just a little bit softer there's no reason for grain to tear on this side and not this side. This is just a whole lot smoother over here. It's a lot harder wood. I, I, like I say, maybe it laid in moisture somewhere before Tuffy got his hands on it. Certainly Tuffy didn't do it because he has way too much respect for the wood. So it probably just laid on the ground somewhere. Anyway, it'll, it'll all finish up nicely. So I'll probably put on two coats of this uh, seal coat, sanding sealer. Two coats of this and then I'll put on two coats of shellac in exactly the same manner. I'll use a brush and a rag and I'll show you the brush part here in a minute when I do the bark. I just like to get this base coat on first around the edges here especially. It keeps the, the brush marks from showing up. Anyway, so I, I don't I don't show the shellac part because it looks just like this. And then I just have the same sanding sealer in this little can and I've got my brush. And I'll brush it onto this bark up here. Like I said, about an inch. About an inch up is all. We'll take care of the rest of it when we get to the top because I'm going to be cutting away most of it, of course. Doesn't that look nice? This bark is always beautiful and it's always such a great contrast with the wood itself. And it's always tight. I don't know why. Never have to glue it down. Never have to repair it. So there you go. That's what I'll be doing for a while. I'll see you back here when we turn it around and start working on the inside. See you in a bit. I'll explain what we've got going on here in just a second. But first of all, Donald Gooden. Donald Gooden. 
Don't go away, bud. I need to talk to you. Donald left a message for me recently, or a, a comment, I should say. And he said, I hate to say it, but you never reply to my comment. Well, Donald, that's just not true. I don't know why you're not seeing them. You are very familiar to me. I reply to every single one of your comments, and, and you are a prolific commenter. I know that. Four, five, six comments a day, maybe more. I reply to all of them. Why you're not seeing them, I don't know. I just don't know. I don't know if it's something in your settings. I don't know if it's something YouTube is doing. But I can tell you what. I read every single one of them, and I've replied to every single one of them. All of them. Every one, every last single one. Now, I don't always put words in there. If I've read your comment, I will usually click the little heart button showing that I love that you left me a comment. I will usually put a happy face in my reply to your comment. I, d I don't always have time to say much more than thank you or happy day or, or, or just the smiley face. I can tell you all, let me tell you all, and I'm not complaining here for a second. I love you guys. I love that you comment to me. It means more to me than you could ever begin to imagine. It's what gets me out of bed every single day. But I just cannot put lengthy replies in there. I just can't. I spend three or four hours every single morning replying to comments or at least reading your comments. And I love it. I love it. Thank you so much. Thank you. It means a lot to me. I just can't do replies to all of them, but you will know that I have read your comment because I clicked the heart button, or at least I put a happy face in there so you know I've read it. I, 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 I can't do any better than that. I'm, I'm sorry. Sometimes I can. You know, it depends. Not every day has 500 comments, but a lot of days do. And it takes hours. Hours that I'm willing to spend. But please, please don't think I'm not reading them and don't think I'm not replying to them or at least letting you know that I've read them because I do. I do do that and I'm happy to do that and I want to do that and I'm grateful that I can do that. So Donald Gooden, change something buddy. Change a setting. Uh, use a phone instead of a computer. Use a computer instead of a phone. Use a tablet instead of a computer. Use a Windows tablet instead of a some other tablet. I don't know. I don't, I don't know. I don't, I just don't know why you can't see that I have read your comment and that I have replied to your comment. I don't know. But believe me, buddy, I'm reading them. I'm reading all of them. Okay, sorry. I hope that didn't turn into a lecture. I wish you folks could feel the outside of this and see the outside of it, and you will. It's smooth as silk, and it's beautiful. It's beautiful grain, and this bark is going to be gorgeous against the inside of the wood that we're going to turn here in a minute. And speaking of turning, we're going to be turning at 550 RPM. 5 8 inch bowl gouge mask and face shield on. I'm not going to get far with this tailstock in my way here. Just can't get the right angle. See, I need to be over here, but the tailstock is right here. It's in my road. So the only thing I can do is work from the inside out, but that's wrong. And it's just asking for a catch. I can do it for a little while, but I shouldn't be doing it. Yeah, can't deal with it. Just can't deal with it. I have a really good fitting tenon down there in the chuck, so I feel good about that. We'll make do. <clears throat> Much better. Whew. 
Whoa. Yep, hardwood, all right, but beautiful. My gosh, it's so gorgeous. Yeah, I'm gonna be doing a lot of sharpening. This is my original gouge that I've been using for close to five years now. And this is this exact same gouge, but new. And I've got them both sharp, or at least that one was, now this one is. So I'll have to sharpen less often, but for twice as long. Now I want to use my naked rake scraper in here on the sides to clean them up before I get rid of the support that I have in the middle because I think I'm at about the right thickness now. Did any good? Yeah, it did. Okay, switch into my longer one again. I think we're real close. Yeah, about three eighths of an inch. It's probably close enough by the time I use my scraper a little more and sand. You know, I think, time for sanding. You hear the raindrops? <laughs> Today's May 15th, middle of May. It's about 52 degrees out, raining like heck. Pretty nice. I'm gonna start the sanding with my two inch sanding disc at 80 grit. I'm gonna sand up through 400 grit. The lathe is gonna be spinning forward at about 380 RPM, and I'm gonna have my mask on. Looks like that'll be pretty easy peasy. I'll bring you back here in just a bit and we'll put some sanding sealer on there. See you in a bit. Sand it up beautifully. Just beautifully. One of the good things about this wood, one of the many good things about this wood, cherry plum from Tuffy in California. This is a sanding sealer just like I put on the outside. No difference. Okay, here we go. So. Early October 2021, I started feeling kind of sickly, couldn't breathe too well. Went to the doctor, ended up in the hospital, spent seven days in the hospital with a lung infection. Got out of the hospital, didn't feel a whole lot better than I did before I went in the hospital. Took about three months to get rid of the lung infection, feeding me full of antibiotics and steroids and whatever. Then I finally started feeling better. I thought it was over, thought I was done with it, started Getting back to turning, I missed a, a, a few weeks in there. Sorry about that. While I was recuperating during those three or four months after I got out of the hospital, 
They sent me for x-rays and CT scans and blah, blah, blah. And then they found lung cancer, found cancer in one of my lungs. Then they decided, now I'm feeling pretty good about now. And they decided, well, we better go in and take out the bottom third of your right lung. They, they call that a lobectomy. They took out the, the bottom lobe. And the doc said, the surgeon said, you won't feel any difference. You can get back in the shop a day after you get home from the hospital for that. I was in the hospital for four days for that little fun thing. Well, it turns out they broke my rib while I was, while they were taking out that lung part. So I was in extreme pain for two months, I guess. Anyway, so that healed up and now I'm feeling really good and it's getting to be summertime and I'm getting excited and I got a whole new life ahead of me. And the, and the surgeon said, yes, we got it all. We got it all. You have no cancer. Okay, cool. I mean, what's better than that? Well, now they decided that uh, I need to have chemo so that I don't get cancer again. So in a couple of two, I don't know, two or three weeks, I'm gonna start chemo and I'll be doing that for four months. And then after that, then I'll be doing immunotherapy for a year. So I'm telling you this, because I think you deserve to know. I have a lot of loyal followers, viewers, subscribers, and I love you guys, and I know you love me. So I just want you to know, I'm not looking for sympathy. I don't want a pity party. I'm just telling you what's going on with me, that's all. I'm not the first person this has ever happened to. I'm not the first person to go on chemo. I'm dreading it. I don't know what to expect from it, except that I guess you feel like crap. I don't know. That's just kind of what I've picked up. So I, so I told the, the, my, my new cancer doctor, whatever they call him, I forget. I said, well, I gotta be able to put a video out every week. He says, I don't think you're gonna be doing that. And I said, well, I have my viewers. I love my viewers and I'm going to put out a video every week. He says, I, I don't think you are. So I don't know how that's going to go, but that's not for a couple of weeks yet. So hopefully I'll be putting out something in the meantime. I, I, I feel great. I feel, I feel just fine. So if you, if you, if you comment on this, chances are excellent. I'm not going to comment back because I just don't want to talk about it. I just want it to be over with, you know, I don't want to drag it out. I don't want to. I don't want you to tell me you're gonna feel like crap, Phil. I don't, I don't wanna know that. Let's let it be a surprise. You know, comment on the turnings. Uh, tell me to have a nice day. I'll tell you to have a nice day. We'll all have a nice day, okay? Now I did already put this on the bark, but some of it got a little bit damaged, damaged in the sanding, so I'm gonna put it on here again, but I, I just don't wanna run over the outside edge onto my nicely She'll act finish out there, so I'm going to be real careful around this edge. I, I'll, I'll put on two coats of uh, sanding sealer, just like I did on the outside, and then two coats of shellac, just like I did on the outside. And then I'm going to bring you back, and we're going to take the tenon off and get a look at this beautiful, beautiful piece of wood sitting upright. So I'll see you in a bit. I mine a block of wood up in my chuck. I'm gonna place a non-slip cloth over that and bring up the bowl and bring up my tailstock. I still have that center hole there for reference so I can just drive my live center into that and that'll help center the piece on that block. I'll bring up the tool rest. We'll spin the piece up, see if it's running true. It's slightly off, but it'll be okay. Turn the speed up to about 525 going to take a 3 8 inch bowl gouge and commence to removing that tenon. I just want to check for clearance. We have good clearance, and my work looks pretty good. Just keep working it away. Got a 
Now that's pretty small, so I'm going to switch to a swept back ball guard so I can get in there a little closer, a little bit tighter. I'm going to slow the speed down to about 400 RPM. I just want to get this as small as I can. And that's quite small, so I'm going to slow the speed down to about 200 RPM. And I'm going to apply the bevel of the gouge against the bottom of the bowl. Pressure towards the headstock. Right hand on the gouge, left hand on the switch. And when the little nub stops turning, we'll know we're through. Kind of like that. Now we'll just take this over here to the workbench, sand that up, sign it, get it finished, and I'll be right back. Be sure you stick around at the end of the video so you can see the before and after shots of this piece. If you'd share the video, I'd really appreciate that. If you want to do something for me, that would be it. I would love people to see this piece, which I think is just gorgeous. And here it is. One cherry plum bowl in the books. Look at that. Look at that beautiful, beautiful grain. I just love this around the bark area, around the edge there. And it's so smooth. It's just, it just feels <laughs> silky. I can't believe it out of a piece like this, you know. And the bark, smooth as can be, won't hurt you. And there's the bottom all finished up. However it goes, I don't know, something like that. Can't quite see it myself. But it's just, just a really nice piece, don't you think? Look at that. Look at that grain, the color, the bark, the inclusions. I really like it. I hope you really like it, and I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you, Tuffy Marginas, for sending this along for all to enjoy. So long, Olivia. If you like this video, thumbs up, please. I'd sure appreciate it. If you're a subscriber, holy cow, how cool are you? If you're not a subscriber, you might consider becoming one, and then you can be cool too. An easy way to subscribe is just click my picture you see there near the end of the video. Your comments are always welcome, and I love reading them. So for now, this is Phil, Shady Acres Woodshop, signing off.